and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from SalesPop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Today I'm delighted to be joined by prolific author and speaker Marshall Goldsmith. How are you doing, Marshall? Very happy to talk to you. Doing just fine. Excellent. And Marshall is actually just down the road from me here in San Diego. Yeah, I normally talk with people from all over the world, so it's nice to be talking with a, a veritable neighbor today. <laughs> so, as I said, Marshall has written um, a lot of different books, and I suggest you you um, you check them out. They would be in the Sales Pop um, library. But what I wanted to talk today was about a, a book he wrote an, a couple of years ago called Triggers: Creating the Be Creating Behavior That Lasts and Becoming the Person You Want to Be. Let's face it. We all want to become the best versions of ourselves, whether it's professionally in, in sales, as a lot of the people who view us are, or just in life in general. So, so Marshall, uh, can you just give me a little bit of background to the premise of the book and how you came up with this, uh, the idea for this book in the first place? Well, it's kind of working backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, start with why don't we become the people that we want to be? Mm -hmm. And as we journey through life, we all have these visions of who we are. We're all going to be these wonderful people. And even on a day-to-day -day basis, we seldom live up to these goals. Well, what happens? As we journey through life, we're bombarded by something called triggers. Now, what is a trigger? A trigger is any stimulus that might impact my behavior. It could be a sight, a sound, a word. Sometimes these push us toward becoming the person that we want to be. Usually the opposite. They push us away from becoming the person we want to be. And in the new world, it's much more true than ever. For example, you, you go to Google, you're going to look something up. It's going to take three minutes. Mm -hmm. Three hours later, you're still online. You don't know why you went online in the first place. Well, what <laughs> happened is triggers. All those little click, 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 click. And after a while, you forget what you're doing. They just take over. So how do you start to identify the triggers that may be holding you back from becoming the person that you want to be? Well, uh, one of the things I highly recommend is called the daily question process. Mm -hmm. And the way the daily question process works is, and any of your listeners can do this, I'm going to teach them something that takes four minutes a day, costs nothing, will help them get better at almost anything. Now, some people are skeptical. Four minutes a day, it costs nothing, help me get better at anything. Too good to be true. Impossible. Half the people that start doing this quit within two weeks. Right. And they do, they do not quit because it does not work. They quit because it does work. See, this is real easy to understand and it's hard to do. Get out a spreadsheet. On one column, list the everything that's important in your life, friends, families, health. And then every question has uh, seven boxes across one for every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then every day you fill out the answer to every question. At the end of the week, you get a report card. Uh, for example, one of my questions is, uh, how many times yesterday did you try to prove you were right when mm -hmm. it was not worth it? Well, the answer is <laughs> almost never get a zero. Right. right? Yeah. Well, hard, hard for the old professor not to be right all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do this every day, and I've been doing this for years, you learn very quickly Life is incredibly easy to talk, uh, and life's incredibly difficult to live. Mm -hmm. If you do this every day, you don't look at your talking values, which are very pretty. You look at your living values, which are not quite so beautiful, not so pretty every day. I've been doing it for years. I have a woman call me up every day. She called me yesterday. She called me today. She's going to call me tomorrow. Somebody said, why do you have a woman call you every day just to go through these questions that you wrote and provide answers that you wrote every day? Why do you do this? Don't you know the theory about how to change behavior? I wrote the theory about how to change behavior. <laughs> That's why I have a woman call me. My name is Marshall Goldsmith. I got ranked number one executive coach in the whole world and number one leadership thinker in the whole world. And I have a woman call me every day. Why do I do this? I'm too cowardly to do this by myself, and I'm too undisciplined, and I need help. And you know what? It's okay. Yeah, no. yeah, and and I love what you just pointed out there because it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, you wrote it, you created it, but you're you you're self aware enough to know what you need in order to be successful, right? I need to have my butt kicked every day. <laughs> One thing I'm very proud of in my book, Triggers, is you probably notice this, 27 mm -hmm. major CEOs endorsed that book, 27. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I so proud of that? 30 years ago, no CEO would admit to having a coach. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here you got the CEO of the year in the United States, winner of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the CEO of Pfizer, the president of the World Bank. Every one of them stands up. You know what they say? I need help. Yeah. It's okay. 
We all need a little help and it's okay. Yeah, when I when I got my first ever executive level job, I actually had this kind of moment of clarity that comes along once in a while in my life. Yeah. <laughs> where where I just said this is what I wanted, but I actually really have no idea how to do this job. So right. I I hired out of my own pocket a coach, right? And th- this is one thing and I, and I like that you brought that up because this is one thing that I always wonder about is um we don't invest enough in ourselves. Right. Oh, you know, we, we wait for other people or for work. We expect work to maybe invest in us, but we don't invest in ourselves. I agree. And you know what? Um, we all need help. Twyla mm-hmm. Thorpe's the world's greatest choreographer. And she's had the same personal trainer for 27 years. Now, why? The trainer doesn't teach her anything new. Mm-hmm. The trainer makes her do what she knows she needs to do. Right. How many of the top 10 tennis players have a coach? Mm-hmm. All of them. Ten. Of course mm-hmm. they do. They all have coaches. Why? They're not their losers. They're winners. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, um, so one thing is obviously, you know, the, the discipline, but the other thing is, like I said, um, is identifying triggers, right? Because sometimes we don't, we don't see the triggers as a trigger, right? Yeah. And what happens is, as we journey through life, a good way to learn to do this is just, when do I get off track Mm -hmm. and why? And learn the, the impact the environment has on us. For example, the extreme, extreme case, you take somebody who's a drug addict, Mm -hmm. They go through rehab. Yep. They give up drugs. They're going to change. Put them back in that same community with sure. those same triggers, that same environment. Three weeks are drug addicts again. Mm-hmm. The environment is very powerful. So what it does is, without meaning to, it controls us. So, you know, there's, there's a few ways to look at life. One theory is in life, uh, you know, a lot of salespeople go to motivational speeches. hmm and the whole idea of a motivational speech, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And, you know, John was sick and poor and tired, and he d- believed he could do it, and he did it. And then, so once extreme view is, you, you can do it on your own. You control the world. Right. The other is B.F. Skinner, the famous psychologist, which is Harvard. He said, the world controls you. It's all triggers. Well, I think it's a little of both. Number one, we don't totally control the world. Did mm-hmm. you ever read a book called The Secret? Yes. I did actually. One of the most ridiculous books ever written, The Secret. And she said, if you envision it, it'll happen. Well, the pro- and every story in the book was true, by the way. Mm-hmm. The only problem is, I have a degree in math, it's called a survivor bias. Yeah, Jimmy envisioned he had cancer and went away. Yeah, they didn't interview the dead people. Right. <laughs> Johnny envisioned he'd win the basketball tournament. He did. They didn't interview the losers. Mm-hmm. Mary wanted to be an actress, and she had, they didn't interview the thousand waitresses in Hollywood. They all envisioned being actresses, mm-hmm. right? So I think it's good to have positive thoughts, but to naively believe just because I envision it's going to happen is ridiculous. So yeah, if that would happen, but nobody gets you don't go, you don't get old, you don't get sick, and you don't die. Mm-hmm. So, so the, basically, at the end of the day, though, I mean, it's um, obviously a positive mindset's a good thing, but you have to back it up with positive actions, right? You have and to work. You have to work. And you have to, as you say, you have to uh, examine your environment. So if you're not being successful, say, in your job, say you're a salesperson, but you're not being successful in your job, what are some of the things that you should be looking at? Well, you know, I, I can give you just six questions that are in the book every day to ask yourself. And they all begin with the phrase, did I do my best to? Mm-hmm. Now, what's powerful about that is that's the one thing you can control. One of them, did I do my best to set clear goals? Rather than waiting for the company to set goals for me today, did I set my own goals? Number two, did I do my best to make progress toward achieving my goals every day? Uh, did I do my best to find meaning every day? Rather than did somebody create meaning for me? Did I do my best to be happy? Rather than did someone make me happy? Mm-hmm. Did I do my best to build positive relationships? And finally, did I do my best to be fully engaged? Just if you look at our research, it's amazing. Just ask yourself these six questions every day. We've done this with thousands of people and a huge majority of the people say they, they get better. Mm-hmm. And, and, I'll, and and if you just even go to the last one, I think, they are, you know, about being engaged. I mean, I think right. that that's that that's a huge and growing issue today because I and mean, what do people say today to you they go oh i'm so much busier than i've ever been we're right. so much busier now i right. don't really believe that to be honest i think we're so much more distracted than we've ever been and i think there's a huge difference between being busy and being distracted 
Yeah, we're incredibly distracted, and that is part of triggers. Why don't people do what I teach? I mean, I've done research studies with tens of thousands of people who have been to my courses, and I measure, do they do what I teach, and do they get better? Mm -hmm. Hey, I've got good news. The people that do this stuff get better. Mm -hmm. There's a study called Leadership as a Context Board, 86,000 people in our research. Any of your listeners can send me an email, marshall at marshallgoldsmith.com. I'll send it to them. People that do this stuff get better, and I've got even better news. People that do nothing don't get worse. <laughs> well, years so, ago, my biggest client was Johnson and Johnson. You know right. Johnson and Johnson. Sure. I had the privilege of working with their CEO Ralph Larson all the way down to leader number two thousand. They all went to my class, and at the end of my class, I told them do some simple things: pick something to improve, talk to people, follow up. I had this technique. Ninety-seven percent said I'm going to do this. A year later, seventy percent did something, and thirty percent nothing. So I said to the people who did nothing, why'd you do nothing? It's just like you said. The answer sounded like this, is a dream. You know, I'm incredibly busy right now, <laughs> given pressures of work and home and new technology that follows me everywhere, and emails and voicemails and competition. I feel as busy as I ever have. Sometimes I feel overcommitted. <laughs> Every now and again, my life feels a little bit out of control. But you know, I'm working on some very unique and special challenges right now. And I think the worst of this is going to be over in four or five months. And then I'm going to spend two or three weeks and get organized and <laughs> spend some time with my family and begin my new healthy life program. And after that, everything's going to be different and it will not be crazy anymore. Well, have you ever had that dream yourself? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you fast forward six months down the road, you're another six months away from that. You know what, especially salespeople, mm -hmm. when I teach my classes, I ask a question, how many of you have a job where you have to make numbers? Raise your hand. You know. And then how many of you have a boss? And then I'll say, I'll talk to Joe. I say, Joe, you have a number. Let's all pretend Joe overachieves on every number by 25%. Yeah. 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 Joe, what are the odds the boss is going to come back next year and say, Joe, take a break. <laughs> Lower the goals. <laughs> no. What happened next year? More, yeah, more. it's going to go 25% up. <laughs> and it's always going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes I work with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are worse. Then I say to the entrepreneur, pretend you overachieve on your goal by 25%. What are you going to do next year? <laughs> Up even higher. Mm -hmm. So with an entre when you have a boss, I always tell people, it will always be crazy. When you're an entrepreneur, you know what I tell people? You will always be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's excellent, but it, but it's a it's a it's a it's a fantastic point because it's another thing that I often think about is when people when people sometimes come to me and ask about they say look I'm thinking about doing this or I'm thinking about doing that but I'm not sure whether the time is right and I always say there's never a right time there's no. only like just do it right I completely agree and the older you get the more you realize that because mm -hmm. you know we don't have that much time. We don't have that much time. And so, yeah, if you're going to do it, do it. Do it. And I've, got a, great, I've sorry, got a great go technique to help people understand mm -hmm. this. Ready? Yep. My best advice in coaching. Take a breath. I want all your listeners to imagine you're 95 years old and you're just getting ready to die. Mm -hmm. Right before you take the last breath, you're given a gift. The ability to go back in time and talk to the person that's listening to me now. Well, what advice would that wise old person who knows what mattered in life and what didn't and what was important and what wasn't. What advice would that nice old person have for you that's listening to me now? Well, I, some friends of mine interviewed old people who were dying. They got to ask this question, what advice would you have? Personal side, three themes. Theme number one, three words, be happy now. Not next week, not next mm -hmm. month, be happy now. Number two, friends and family. Take the time because they're the only people there when you're dying. Mm -hmm. And then number three, go for it. Like you said, go for it. You got a dream, go for it. Because you don't go for it when you're 35. You're not going to start when you're 85. <laughs> so, you know, just, just go for it. So are you suggesting that their 10,000 Instagram followers aren't going to be there at the very end? You know? <laughs> not, hey, I've got on LinkedIn, I've got over a million. <laughs> 1,075,000 followers to be exact, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, um, so I, I, and, I think that's a, and I think that's a great uh, piece of advice that people should, should think about because I do, um, I do think we all find ourselves often, as you mentioned earlier, living in the future or outsourcing everything into the future or saying, you know, right. okay. or fate. That's the other part is I think outsourcing your future to fate as opposed to taking control of it. Well, and again, um, some people believe life is just a function of purely random chance. 
And those people buy lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you believe. You probably just go out and buy lottery tickets. And that's why lottery, the lottery is basically a tax on the poor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because people that buy lottery tickets tend to be poor people because they believe their success is just a function of luck anyway. Mm-hmm. They tend to be not as successful in life, and that's what leads them to buy lottery tickets. And by the way, a huge number. If they win the lottery, what do they do within five years? Well, they blow the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's very it's very true. But just um, uh, we're we're nearly out of time here. But um, do you think that today people are you know I mean you hear about getting you triggers. It's a great it's great that you have that book out because people are talking about being triggered all the time now. Like everybody's triggered. I mean, do you think people are finding more and more things to sort of affect how they operate as opposed to you know really as you say going back to the even those six fundamental questions or the the three questions that you and really focusing on what actually impacts and matters my life as opposed to all these other things going on in the world yeah, there's one th- question in the book that i love this is before you deal with any topic ask one question am i willing at this time to make the investment required to make a positive difference on this topic the answer mm-hmm. is yes go for it the answer is no let it go we waste so much of our lives on things we're not going to control <laughs> one of my neighbors in new york was a young woman named Lindsay lohan you ever heard of her before that mm-hmm. yeah how many billions of hours are wasted people Lindsay read Lindsay lohan got drunk Lindsay Lohan got stoned. Mm-hmm. I always tell my classes, if you ever think my neighbor Lindsay Lohan is a loser, remember one thing. She's not wasting her life thinking about you. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, th- I think that's. I think, and I think that's a fantastic takeaway to to end the interview. So, as you say, if you're not prepared to invest the time or energy in doing something about it, it's all very well to sit out in the backyard with a beer in your hand and start complaining about things. But if you're not actually prepared to get up. Maybe you should just move on quickly to something move else. On. Put that energy into where you can make a difference, mm-hmm. not where you're not going to make a difference anyway. Yeah, and I think that's really wise words to end up with because I truly believe that if everybody, um, especially today, if everybody just looked around them in the small circle around them and said, how can I make a positive impact here? If everybody did that, the world would be a better place, right? I agree. <laughs> well, listen, Marshall, this has been fantastic. Uh, hopefully you'll come back because you, you've, you've been so prolific in your writing and your thinking and everything. You've got so many other things to talk about. Hopefully you'll come back for another interview soon. Thank you so much. All right. Again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.